The Road Home by Minnesota composer Stephen Paulus has become a staple of the mixed choir repertoire since its premiere in 2005. Lyricist Michael Dennis Brown has said that he was searching for a significantly significant simplicity, something memorable, something universal that still has a personal vibration, something that suggests the consolation that can come after times of great stress. When concert choir members were asked to reflect on their interpretation of the home in the text, they spoke to a number of things, their faith, their family, a place in nature that brings a centering feeling, as well as the communities they are a part of here at PLHS. Many singers took, an took the assignment as an opportunity to be very vulnerable, to share their voice and the burdens that they carry every day. One singer shared that this text, he hopes, acts as an awakening for those who listen to it to find themselves and to begin their journey home. To a greater sense of belonging.
We are PLSAS Voices. I am Abby Hofferman. This year, I was empowered by Dr. Stallo to work with her to begin the Superintendent Student Advisory Council. Our purpose is to ensure that district leadership engages in dialogue with students, hears student perspective, asks for input on district-wide initiatives, stays connected to students, and supports student leadership as valued members of our school community. Today, we want to use our voices to share our gratitude to the Prior Lake Savage Area Schools staff as we recognize, celebrate, and thank you for all you have done to support us, our voices, and our learning this year. We are PLSS Voices. I am Brianna Storley. Teachers, whether you hear this every day or never at all, your relationships with your, with your students matter. Asking us about our days or conveying how you care through a Schoology message can be the difference between a good or a bad day for many students. My relationships with my teachers allow me to confidently use my voice in class, ask meaningful questions, and feel safe in class. Thank you so much to teachers and all district staff who go out of their way to make students feel welcome and loved. I cannot express how much it means to us. We are PLSAS Voices. I am Sophia Nelson. This year, all of our staff worked to support our theme, We Are PLSAS Voices. One teacher who helped amplify my voice was one of my band directors, Mr. Schramm. Mr. Schramm has always been an amazing teacher, but this year he stood out even more. Of course, he helped me improve on my musical skills and to strengthen my role in our band family. But he was also there to reach out to me when I struggled with my mental health. He let me confide in him about the struggles of being queer in our community, and he supports me in everything that I do. He went above and beyond his job to help me speak my truth and amplify my voice. Thank you. We are PLSCS Voices. I am Sarah Lamb. To teachers, thank you for creating a safe space where I could share my thoughts and, and opinions. Having the opportunity to think out loud and analyze different perspectives allowed me to start TAG to advocate for equity and inclusion and join SACC to amplify student voices. You've taught me to convey my ideas in an effective way and to understand world events more critically. All the skills I've learned in class, I've used outside of class to be more assertive and articulate. Thank you so much. I'd like to start with a quick little story. The day before my birthday in sixth grade, I found out that my stepsister had died. It was very difficult for me, but one teacher in particular stood out and made me feel special the next day when she brought me in front of the class and had them sing happy birthday to me. Thank you, Mrs. Case, and congrats on your retirement. Thank you again. I'd also like to say a few words to our custodians and nutrition staff. Thank you for always sharing a smile with us. What you do for us every day means the world. Thank you. <laughs> you have just heard a handful of our voices, voices that you have helped shape and amplify. Whether you greeted us on our first day of kindergarten or helped us work through a math problem last week, we are sincerely grateful for every effort. Thank you teachers, child nutrition services, custodians, administrators, coaches, advisors, office staff, bus drivers, and all support staff for your consistency in supporting us through every up and down. We are PLSAS Voices, and you have shown us that voices matter. Thank you. We are PLSEA's Coalition for Teachers of Color. My name is Carmita Jara, a board member and director of engagement and membership. My name is Gisela Santiago, and I'm the Director of Leadership Development. My name is Adrienne Young, and I'm the CTOC First Officer and Director of Internal Education. 
My name is Sabrina Tapia Contreras, and I am the EMAC Coordinator and Director of Educational Financial Transparency. Our CTOC mission is that we exist to facilitate networks for educators and stakeholders where traditionally marginalized voices are heard, supported, and uplifted. We work to build a staff that reflects our student population while advocating for students' access to staff of color who share their values and experiences. We believe that anti-racism is only achievable through an indigenous democracy. PLSAS is located on traditional, ancestral, and contemporary lands of indigenous people. The school district resides on Shakopee Mdewakanton Sioux land ceded in the treaties of 1805 to 1851. PLSA and PLSAS acknowledge this place as a complex and layered history. This land acknowledgement is one of the ways in which we work to educate the schools and community about this land and our relationship with it and each other. Um, PLSEA and PLSAS are committed to ongoing efforts to recognize, support, and advocate for American Indian nations and people. Welcome to the 2021 All District Staff End of the Year Celebration. I think the fact that we made it through this incredibly different, difficult year is indeed a reason to celebrate. We not only made it, we did amazing things to provide quality education to almost 8,700 students, to build meaningful relationships to support students, families, and one another, and to innovate in unbelievable ways that will be life-changing all while centering our work on being responsive to the needs of our students during a global health pandemic. We didn't just get through this pandemic, we produced work that advanced our strategic plan and our mission for our students. I never doubted you, and I always knew we got this. As we begin today, I want to thank and acknowledge those who helped support this event, along with Dave Tuma, Martha Walsh, Chelsea Brott, Christy Musman, and the folks who were on stage earlier and those yet to come. I also want to thank the contributors to the program, Prior Lake Savage Opt Optimist Club, the Prior Lake Lions, the PLSAS FIT Committee, and our major contributor of our awards, the Laker Education Foundation. Thank you all. Our theme this year, We Are PLSAS Voices, helped us speak our truth and listen to and empower the voices of our students and families to help us learn from a challenging year and to capture opportunities for becoming even more as individuals and as an organization in the future. Thank you to those who, are, who have already shared your voices in this celebration. Thank you to the Prior Lake High School Choir, Rob and Randy, for the beautiful opening song, The Road Home. When I first heard this song performed, I was struck by the line, when I, I was struck by the line, there is a voice I can hear that will lead me home. Staff, it was your voices all year that provided the security and the comfort of home for scared, anxious, worried, confused students during Google Meets, during home hybrid instruction, and in the last few months when we were finally, or most of us at least, were finally together in person. Thank you to the Superintendent Student Advisory Council members for lifting up your voices today to give tribute to our 1,250 employees who were miracle workers this year. Thank you to the board members of the Coalition of Teachers of Color for the important work that you have done all year and for sharing your voices as you grounded us in history and paid tribute to the voices and the lives who walked, lived, and contributed on this land before us. When I kick off the year with all of you on August 31st, that seems like an absolute lifetime ago, I shared the following poem by Leslie Dwight. 
What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loudly, finally awakening us from ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change. Declare change. Work for change. Become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 2020 isn't canceled. Rather, the most important year of all. 2020 was not canceled, nor was 2021. And as we emerge from this pandemic, as we take time to get away and reflect, as we celebrate our accomplishments, and as we recognize the urgency of the work yet to be accomplished in order to impact and change lives, indeed, this past year might be the most important year of them all. What we learn, what we change, and who we become as individuals and as an organization in the work of achieving equitable student outcomes and racial justice, and how we live and lead with love and kindness will be the testament to the importance of this year. In the midst of the pandemic, we had a, a school board election in November. Two new school board members joined the existing team, and this board has stepped up and used their voices to ensure the voices of students, staff, family, and community stakeholders matter, and that the glaring inequities brought to light through the pandemic, the murder of George Floyd, and racial inequities will continue to be a priority in our school district. I'm so grateful to and proud of the work of the board and many of you who are with us, as well as our community stakeholders, for creating a school board resolution of equity and inclusion, which defines what this governing body of our school district established as the foundation and direction of our district, as they declared their commitment to developing and sustaining an inclusive and anti-racist schools community, where all students, parents, families, staff, and community members are welcome, worried, Welcome, valued, and safe. I want to thank Stacy, Michael, Jonathan, Enrique, Mary, Julie, Amy, and Abby for being a school board centered on the purpose of public education and, most importantly, centered on our students. I want to thank you for the support you have given our staff, our leaders, and that you have given me during a very challenging year. At this time, I'd welcome School Board Chair Stacy Ruel to say a few words. Thank you, Terry. On behalf of the board, I want to express a heartfelt note of thanks for all you have done this year. Despite all the challenges that this year presented, you've always been focused on what has been best for our kids. I want to thank each and every one of you for being flexible, understanding, and innovative in doing your jobs each and every day. You showed up throughout the year, whether it be virtual or in person, to give your best to our students and families. You were the calm in the storm. No amount of words can do justice for all that you have done. But what the board would like you to do this summer is take time for yourselves and with the people you love, rest, relax, and refresh, and reflect on everything that you've accomplished these last, this last year. And what we'd like to do is hopefully welcome you back next fall to a normal school year. So please take care, be well, and we'll see you in the fall. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. We are PLSAS Voices, and here are some of the accomplishments of what our collective voices have, have accomplished this year. We provided quality education and loving support during a pandemic. We pivoted multiple times in multiple ways throughout the year, and we implemented literally hundreds of changes. Change was our only constant this year. In order to meet the COVID-19 safety requirements, restrictions, and protocols, we had to make those changes 
and we made them to meet the needs of our students, staff, and families. We continue to advance strategic priority work like personalized learning, equity, e-STEM, MTSS, social emotional learning, and innovation. We worked collaboratively to seek difficult solutions for continued budget constraints. We found new, efficient, and meaningful ways to stay connected, build relationships, and support students, families, and one another. We provided operational excellence and services in every department across the district, and we shifted gears and made adjustments with each guidance change and new regulation. We grew programs and support for our earliest learners through our seniors, all while prioritizing in-person learning as much as we were able to safely do so. From packing meals and curbside pickup, to providing childcare, to delivering devices, books, and homework, to enhance cleaning, finding ways to connect with students and families, and transforming all of our practices and protocols including the way we teach and the way students learn. Staff, you created magic each and every day. We are PLSAS Voices, and we have learned many lessons this year that will make us better. We learned collectively. We can make change in education very rapidly. We don't have to wait to make bold changes and improvements. We learned that some of those changes were really good for students and staff, and we want to maintain those. However, we also learned that some of the changes did not yield the student outcomes we were seeking, and we'll let those go. We clearly learned that face-to-face -face interactions, instruction, and engagement with staff and students together really matters. We learned our students and families really need us. They needed us in different ways this year. They will continue to need us as we get back to more routines and experience a normal school start next year as we commit to meeting students where they are and accelerating their learning. Please join me in not ever using the term learning loss. Our kids learned a lot in this pandemic, and we will ensure that they have the academic and social and emotional supports to learn at high levels upon their return. I've said since the beginning of this pandemic that the bigger tragedy other than the devastation and the loss of lives this year, will be if we don't implement changes and use the lessons they've learned and instead go back to some of our pre-pandemic ways. We must stay fed steadfast in creating the district we desire and the districts our students and us deserve. We started this year listening to our students through the Voices Framework video. We learned some lessons from them then that have been reinforced throughout the past year. We must use our limited and precious time to build and deepen student and staff relationships. We must connect the dots around existing social emotional learning and equity work for each and every student. We must do this and we must also challenge and support rigorous academic, academics and high expectations for each and every student. We must work with student leaders to develop strategies so they can be upstanders and not bystanders to help create the culture of love and belonging that we need in each one of our buildings. I'm confident you will embrace these lessons as you come back rested and energized to do all you can to educate all learners to reach their full potential as contributing and productive members of our ever-changing global community. I'd like to invite Dave Brown, administrator at Bridges Area Learning Center, to share a message with you now. His voice and perspective is, power, is powerful, and I'm grateful for his leadership and insight. Thank you, Dr. Stallo. I indeed have the privilege of leading Bridges Area Learning Center, and I want you to know that you are an American educator and an American hero. This past year, American educators have proven themselves time and time again to be American heroes. We all have endured a global pandemic that has fundamentally changed our work this past year. You've shown up and you have risen to the occasion. In 2018, I served in the Middle East as part of a deployment with the Minnesota National Guard. That deployment has reminded me of this past year. The pandemic's intensity, mental toll, 
the necessity to always be on and the wait as time progressed at least matches that of that deployment. Teachers, paraprofessionals, and educator, educational support staff were asked to completely shift how the job of educating is done essentially on a moment's notice. Our teachers, of course, did what they always do, figure out how to best engage and connect with students. The amount of work and the asymmetrical nature of the work that teachers did this year during a pandemic has been immense. Teachers worked tires, tirelessly this past year, developing places and spaces in ways that did not exist just months ago. Your tenacity, innovation, commitment to students and amazing ways that you've connected and taught through a pandemic will always be one of the great examples of what it is to be a teacher. You are an American hero. Our student support staff also had to shift their work this past year. Supporting students required so much more. You have shown up this past year with the unimaginable task of supporting students both at school and at home. Families look to you when the pandemic caused loss, isolation, deterioration of mental health, and a whole other host of items impacting our students' social and emotional wellness. And as usual, you rose to the occasion. You are an American hero. Our district support services had to reinvent how they're able to do the important logistic and distribution and service work that provides the backbone of our schools. You've kept our building cleaned and safe. You've kept us organized and informed. You are an American hero. Our administrators work tirelessly to plan how Prior Lake Savage Area schools should look with restriction after restriction after restriction, ensuring our schools continued to be a place of high engagement and expectation when we could not do a whole bunch of anything. You too are an American hero. Our kids company and community ed groups did amazing work providing opportunities and care when the pandemic first started, they were here providing health care. Our health care workers care for their children and first responders so they could stay in the fight against the pandemic. You are an American hero. And I absolutely want to call out the amazing work of our nurses and health care services. Their competency, love, and assurance during terrifying moments that COVID-19 caused help ease the stress. Your knowledge, caring, and gentle manner in which you worked with intense situations were so wonderful. You too are an American hero. Of course, more than the pandemic occurred this past year, we saw a reckoning in racial justice that required all of us to look deeply into ourselves and to our work to ensure that we are providing opportunity for all students. In Dr. Bettina Love's book, We Want to Do More Than Survive, she writes, we must struggle together, not only to reimagine schools, but to build new ones that we were taught to believe are impossible. Schools based on intersectional justice, anti-racism, love, healing, and joy. We still have work to do, but thank you for engaging in this work and reimagining our schools this year. You are an American hero. When the work seemed crushing, when there was a level of uncertainty that we never experienced before, you were asked to do things in ways that you've never done before, and you showed up, and you crushed it. You all are American educators, and you all are American heroes. Thank you. Thank you, Dave, for your service, for your words, for your message. And Dave, you too are a true American hero. Thank you. At this time, we are going to begin our award ceremony and recognition. So at this time, I would ask Dr. Dan Edwards to please come up to the stage and share the service recognitions. Once again, as I have done over the past 10 years, it's my pleasure to recognize the various folks in our school district for their years of service. 
Our first group of uh, staff members to be recognized are our five year of service members. Kelsey Abbott, high school. Deb Anderson, DSC. Casey Andre, Hidden Oaks, Twin Oaks. Rachel Astrup, Red Tail Ridge. Angela Beaton, Red Tail Ridge. Christine Blake, Westwood. Nicole Bonsma, High School. Alyssa Brower, Westwood. Emma Breitenstein, Breitenstein, Westwood. Julie Christensen, Red Tail Ridge. Richard Craddock, High School. Joe Deutsch, High School. Chris Dickey, Edgewood. Marsha Doty, Hidden Oaks. Colleen Ellert, Westwood. Neil Engler, High School. Christine Fick, Hamilton Ridge. Allison Fisher, Edgewood. Kimberly Groutman, Edgewood. Thor Greengard, Jeffers Pond. Julianne Hansen, Edgewood. Heather Hartman, Glendale. Matthew Helm, High School. Kalina Holman, High School. Twyla Irvine, Laola Delago. Claire Jonas, Hidden Oaks. Kazumi Katoka, Five Hawks. Kirsten Kettleson, Glendale and Hidden Oaks. Tyler Kuntz, High School. Matthew Krennick, District Wide. Andrew Kurkowski, High School. Megan Lannon, Hamilton Ridge. Michelle Lands, High School and ALC. Katie Lawrence, Hamilton Ridge. Heidi Lowry, Jeffers Pond. Elizabeth Layton, District Wide. Diane Mason, Community Education. Bridget Mason, Five Hawks. Marissa McDonald, Edgewood. Katrina McGrail, Hamilton Ridge. Heidi Michelson, Twin Oaks and Five Hawks. Sarah Middendorf, Jeffers Pond. Christian Miller, Hidden Oaks. Andrea Murphy, DSC. Nella Nielsen, Laola Delago. Kirsten Nelson, High School. Michael O'Hara, DSC. Shelby Petretti, High School. Aaron Pepin, Jeffers Pond. Daniela Perez, Laola Delago. Alyssa Palaga, High School. Nicole Remus, Five Hawks. Ann Schaefer, Westwood. Laura Schluck, Hamilton Ridge. Simon Skuzlachik, High School. Melissa Smith, High School. Anna Steedman, High School. Joe Staggy, DSC. Tracy Stock, Twin Oaks. Lisa Swope, Twin Oaks. Patricia Tassi, Glendale. Sherry Tavis, Five Hawks. Catherine Tinquist, Jeffers Pond. Elizabeth Teleski, DSC. Nikki Varco, Redtail Ridge. Tiffany Walton, Glendale. Kelly Wentz, Twin Oaks. Brooke Zahn, Jeffers Pond. And Karen Zielinski, Hamilton Ridge. Those are our five year of service recognition people for this year. Thank you. Moving on to our staff members who are being recognized for 10 years of service to Prior Lake Savage Area Schools. Shana Bates, Hamilton Ridge. Catherine Castor, Edgewood Redtail. John Dahl, Twin Oaks. Catherine Dunkley, High School. Jason Dvorak, Hidden Oaks. Christy Gerald, DSC. Kate Helland, Glendale. Ellen Humbert, Hidden Oaks. Jonathan Inglesby, High School and Hidden Oaks. Dawn Kess, High School. Jennifer Knutson, Hidden Oaks. Linda Knutson, Hidden Oaks and Twin Oaks. Ann Koenig, Twin Oaks. Jean Kowalski, High School. Sonia Laurent, Red Tail and Jeffers Pond. Catherine Lichtenberger, Glendale. Andrew Martin, Bridges ALC. Deborah Maxfield, Edgewood. Marcus Malazzo, DSC. 
Julie Miller, Edgewood, Teresa Mosier, Hidden Oaks, Patricia Munsterman, Laola Delago, Carlene Needham, Westwood, Kimberly Olson Tice, Edgewood, Lori Parker, Edgewood, Mary Jo Pauly, Twin Oaks and High School, PJ Priest, High School, Leah Quinn, Glendale, Ishmael Robles Vesquez, High School, Nicole Rydell, High School, Elizabeth Satterland, Hidden Oaks, Twin Oaks and High School, Brian Schleisman, High School, Deborah Shellum, Jeffers Pond, Kelly Vossen, Kids Company, and Trisha Walsh, High School. These are our 10 years of service recognitions for this year. Now moving on to our 20 years of service to Prior Lake Savage Area Schools, recognizing James Anderson, Glendale, Brian Anderson, Twin Oaks, Holly Bartholo, Twin Oaks, Bobby Burkholz, Community Ed, Sarah Carpenter, Hidden Oaks, Michael Dean, Hidden Oaks and Twin Oaks, Nancy Tice, High School, Catherine Edward, Edgewood, Bonnie Fanning, Fanning, Jeffers Pond, Scott Giesler, Glendale, Krista Guthrie, Hamilton Ridge, Michelle Hartwig, Jeffers Pond, Aaron Hester, High School, Vicki Hilsendegger, Twin Oaks, Erica Cabes, High School, Sarah LeClaire, Edgewood, Terry Lehman, Jeffers Pond, Kathleen McGinnis, Redtail Ridge, Dana Reitz, Hamilton Ridge, Carrie Rittenhouse, Five Hawks, Jessica Robeson, Glendale, Kelly Schoenbauer, Hamilton Ridge, Amber Sievald, High School, Steve Showalter, High School, David Stanky, Hidden Oaks, Becky Stark, Hidden Oaks, Maria Sullivan, Red Tail Ridge, Marin Thorstenson, High School, Laura Trudeau, Five Hawks, John Wallstrom, Red Tail Ridge and Laola Delago, Leanne Weichel, Jeffers Pond, and Brent Whiteside, High School. And this year we have one staff member uh, receiving recognition for 30 years of service to Prior Lake at Area Schools, and that is Nancy Rausch, ECFE Assistant at Edgewood. Our 30 years of service recognition. That concludes our years of service recognition. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Edwards, and thank you all for those years of service and all that you do. At this time, I'd like to recognize our 20 retirees who have a combined total of 420 years of service. We will miss you, and we are grateful for all you have given Prior Lake Savage Area Schools. Thank you. Carol Akey, 31 years of service. Jill Blair, 21 years of service. Megan Bloomquist, 14 years. Gail Borkhart, 20 years. Paula Case, 33 years of service. Lisa Diley, 10 years. Ellen Duzik, 18 years. Cheryl Demet, 15 years. Kelly Geerdes, 31 years. Cheryl Holst, 12 years. Maureen Johnson, 24 years of service. Mary Kowitz, 32 years of service. Bonnie McGarry, eight years. Michelle Prozen, 25 years. Deb Rubash, 15 years. Rita Savoy, 22 years. Eve St. Main, 22 years. Sandy Timmerman, 35 years. Leanne Weichel, 20 years. 
and Tim went 12 years. Again, thank you for the many lives that you have touched throughout your years here. You've made us a better school district. Next up are the Educator of Excellence, Outstanding Service, and Leadership Awards. Certified and support staff are nominated by their fellow colleagues for their exemplary performance. The unbelievably hard task of choosing the winners is done by past award recipients in each category. Although there are too many nominees to name individually, I just want you all to know that you exemplify Laker pride. A quick reminder before we get started, the Laker Education Foundation funds these awards and all nominees can pick up their certificates at the buildings. We'll start with the Elementary Educator of Excellence. This person is not only a wonderful teacher, but has also pro proven to be an enthusiastic team member and leader for other teachers. This person goes above and beyond. This person can routinely be found helping teachers pivot new initiatives, meeting with learning teams to analyze data, and teaching co-teaching lessons in multiple grade levels. This person is at the forefront of new educational initiatives and serves as a professional mentor that encourages teachers to continue to grow as educators. This person takes on leadership opportunities and, and is a constant on district curriculum teams. This person has served on numerous committees, including BILT, PST, MTSS, commit, uh, AGR, EE Committee, ELA Committee Review, uh, District Technology Committee, and many others. This person is an active leader in the PLSEA. This person is an exemplary educator. Melanie Anderson is a reading interventionist at Glendale Elementary and our Elementary Educator of Excellence. Congratulations. This person takes the, this next award. Uh, this person takes the time to get to know each and every one of our, their students, understanding their challenges and celebrating their individual successes. This person deeply cares for each student and makes them feel important and special. This person is creative, innovative, and an inspiration to students. This person goes above and beyond and is committed to the profession, to students, families, the building, and the district. This person is always willing to help out and go the extra mile whenever needed. This person has proven to be a dedicated district employee, serving the staff, students, and families in Prior Lake for many years. Kelly Geardis is an EL teacher at Glendale Elementary and our Elementary Educator of Excellence. Secondary Educator of Excellence Award winners. This person has withstood changes, referendums, administrators, curriculum review, professional development days, welcome back, and end of the year celebrations, not to mention hundreds and thousands of students. This person embraces all that is right in education. This person is committed and dedicated to each and every one of their students. This person, although quiet in manner, is sharp, witty, funny, and insightful. Students love the sense of humor and firm but fair teaching style. This person has an incredible knack for listening and being there for others in the midst of family celebrations, new babies, marriages, loss, and sickness. This person truly cares about others. PLSAS is lucky to have this person who shares the devotion to teaching for countless years. Carol Akey, English teacher at Prior Lake High School, is our Secondary Educator of Excellence Award winner. This person demonstrates skills of an effective teacher throughout the constant shift in teaching format that COVID presented to us. This person is flexible and understanding with students. During a challenging time like no other, this person created a classroom atmosphere, both online and in person, that most of the students looked forward to each day. This person served as a constant reminder to put students first and maintain perspective of a bigger picture and the challenges that many students face. This person is a PLSEA executive board member and often uh, shared an ear for fellow staff members with personal and professional concerns. This person is consistently engaging, adaptable, genuine, and understanding throughout a challenging year. 
Alan Anderson is a social studies teacher at Prior Lake High School and our Secondary Education of Excellence Award winner. Moving now to the Elementary Outstanding Service Awards. This person come to school, comes to school with a good attitude and works hard to help everyone. This person is very kind and cares about people. This person will bend over backwards to solve problems and be helpful. This person works with staff, parents, and kids with the same respect and joy. This person is a great example for our school district. This person is always willing to try to figure out problems and takes care of all of us. We're fortunate to have her working at our school. Jean Deutsch is a building secretary at Red Tail Ridge and an elementary outstanding service recipient. When I think of this person, many words come to mind, caring, empathetic, helpful, and kind, just to name a few. Health and safety have been at the forefront of this school year. This person helps guide our students and staff stay safe. This person routinely communicates with parents on health issues and concerns. This person's professionalism is top notch. When this person isn't helping with a lost tooth, bloody nose, or stomach ache, you can find them helping the office staff with many duties, including student arrival and student dismissal. This person can be routinely found each afternoon with a pair of gloves and a container of disinfecting wipes. This person helps prepare for field trips, including our annual trip to Wolfridge. This person is also a leader on our building's MERT team. Glendale is lucky to have her. Lisa Tice is a health aide at Glendale Elementary and an elementary outstanding service recipient. Moving to secondary outstanding service award winners. This person is the epitome of an outstanding service award. This person's leadership over the period of this pandemic has been on point. When the school closures first occurred, this person had to pivot from running a lunch program to becoming a high production lunch packing program. The kitchen was under construction, so the staff were moved to Twin Oaks. This person managed staff from multiple schools. The amount of food ordering needed to fill bags was mind blowing, and this person took it on with a positive attitude that helped calm the stress of the unknown of the unknown other staff were facing. This person was able to balance the employee needs along with all that was needed of her to run this production kitchen. During the spring, the kitchen produced 107, 510 meals. Our school started in the fall. One school started in the fall. This person was running hot meals for our hybrid students along with making bagged meals for our distance learning students. The kitchen has produced 384,000 400 meals to date. Bronwyn Anderson is a child nutrition manager at Prior Lake High School and is a secondary outstanding service award recipient. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings with a single bound. Look down the hall, around the corner, up the roof. Is it a student, a teacher? No, it's Superman. Superman can change the course of student walking patterns, bend steel with bare hands, and who is disguised as the mild-mannered custodian who fights a never-ending battle for cleanliness, order, and an environmentally friendly school environment. This person handles the school with TLC, making sure everything is in order, stopping to say hello to students and staff, greeting callers on the walkie-talkie with a polite, how may I help you? This person maintains a smile on his face and a jump in his step. This person puts the needs of the school and staff as number one priority every day, and our school reflects the attention to detail. Jav Jodas is the head custodian at Hidden Oaks Middle School and a secondary outstanding service recipient. And now for the District Outstanding Service Awards. The dynamic duo, one cannot be nominated without the other. These two have worked incredibly hard this past year. They have gone above and beyond in providing outstanding service. This past year, our district quickly shifted to a one-to-one -one district, K-12. The number of devices to maintain was staggering. 
They have diligently worked to ensure our families, students, and staff have technology, accessibility, and device needs met. Distant, during distance learning and hybrid models, they provided countless hours of troubleshooting and support to families and students. And through it all, they've remained incredibly organized, composed, welcoming, and compassionate. These two respond quickly to all requests and during testing provided same day replacement for devices, even hand delivering them when needed. We're so grateful for their knowledge and willingness to help in any situation. These guys are rock stars. Joe Roy and Mike O'Hara are technology specialists and recipients of our District Outstanding Service Award. I would now like to introduce uh, the president of the Laker Education Foundation, Richie Kuczynski, who will be sharing with us uh, the Outstanding Leadership Award. Good morning. My name is Richie Kuczynski. I am the principal of Lola de Lago, a father of three in Prior Lake Savage Area Schools and a Prior Lake resident. And I also serve as the president of the Laker Educational Foundation. Our motto is inspire, collaborate, and connect. I welcome anybody interested to learn more about our foundation. We are always looking for getting more new board members. Thank you, Dr. Stallo. The Laker Educational Foundation is proud to be the continuous sponsor and to, pro to provide the funding for these prestigious awards. We fully understand how important the advancement of education is in our district, and we are thankful the Laker Education Foundation can be part of this innovative and, cre and the creativity. We have big ideas in the works for next year. Stay tuned. But now, today we are here to celebrate you. On to the Leadership Award. The Leadership Award states the criteria. This person shows evidence of having held positions of building or district leadership on various committees, possesses strong critical thinking, decision making, resiliency, organizational two-way interpersonal skills, and is of the highest integrity and shows genuine respect and concern for others. As we have stated throughout this presentation, constant changes in protocols kids at home, kids at school, synchronized learning, vaccinations, social distancing, masks, no masks, all of the unpredictability that has come with the pandemic teaching and learning have made this year almost impossible and truly unbearable at times. But through all of the chaos and confusion, Joe Kubushek has been there to make sense of it all and to provide exceptional guidance as COVID-19 directives came down from local, state, and federal agencies. I truly believe that Joe has been the key to making sure that this year in particular was, was successful for all staff in the district, students, and families throughout the community. Even with all that he is managing and all that he works through to help keep our students safe, our students and staff safe, he is willing to take the time to stop at answering questions or have important conversations when there is a need to do so. We simply could not have done this year or accomplished what we did this year without his hard work, leadership, and dedication to our district. There is no single administrator that has had as much impact on the entire district and community as he has. Joe Kabushek, COVID-19 coordinator, also known as COVID Joe to many, and high school assistant principal is our 2021 Leadership Award recipient. Joe, could you please come forward to receive your award? I personally can't thank Joe enough. I have had numerous phone calls, text messages with Joe about six feet apart, social distancing, contact tracing, and he's always been there to answer every question. On behalf of the Laker Educational Foundation, Joe, congratulations. Thank you so much. Hold on, Joe. I'm not letting you get away without a few comments. Congratulations. I don't think that either one of us had an idea 
what I was asking you when I said, hey, Joe, would you be willing to be the district COVID-19 coordinator this year? And I made a lot of maybe not great decisions this year, or a lot of people think I didn't make very good decisions this year. Probably the best decision that I made was putting you in that position. Your calm, your professionalism, your responsiveness. I have more text and emails and phone calls to you than anybody this year. And you have always done it with gratitude and helpfulness and a true professional. So I want to thank you for everything you've done this year. I want to thank you for your friendship. And I want to thank you for being an exceptional leader. And I know we're probably going to get in trouble for this from my uh, COVID uh, coordinator, but what the heck. And let's pretend that the uh, auditorium is absolutely full right now and blowing up in applause. And I hope that for all of those awards, you are able to recognize um, your colleagues who are in your building and celebrate them, um, all so incredibly deserving, as are all of the nominees. At this time, I'd like to welcome our Interim District Activities Director, Beth Fuller, to the stage to present the next two awards. Um, as Beth is making her way, Beth, I want to say another resounding thank you to you. You stepped in to a huge role during a very difficult year, um, and you have been an absolutely amazing leader. So thank you for everything you've done. Thank you, and thanks for tuning in today, PLSAS staff. Um, as Terry said, I'm Beth Fuller, serving in the activity director role this spring, and I'm privileged to help honor our coach of the year and activity advisor of the year. Before I do that, I just want to say thank you to all of our coaches and advisors. I've witnessed so many of you going the extra mile, helping each other with how to handle this COVID protocol. Um, so many questions, so many protocols to work through, and we did it. Uh, so you, everyone supported each other from season to season and busted their butts to make our events happen safely, and our students and families appreciated it. So thank you to all of you. It has truly been a community effort, and I'm filled with gratitude at how we tackled everything from virtual theater and Knowledge Bowl to our in-person events. Um, everything ran very smoothly. We found a way and I want to thank everyone who had a role and a hand in helping make this happen. Being part of PL activities is an amazing experience every year, but especially this year. So let's get started with our coach of the year. This person was nominated by a fellow head coach and joined our Prior Lake staff in 2015. When I first met this coach, I was impressed with her confidence, her passion for students, and their development, and also her spark. She can be so positive and engaging with students and staff alike. This coach is a motivator. She wants her student athletes to be successful in all that they do. She understands the importance of developing meaningful relationships with students and athletes in the classroom and on the fields. She's also a learner and always seeks growth opportunities and improvement. She wants to achieve more and is always there to be part of the discussion and the solution. She's willing to speak up on behalf of her athletes and staff. She supports multiple sport athletes and wants to help our students reach their goals in and out of season. She's also a go-getter and has worked to ensure that players are being successful at all levels of Prior Lake soccer and track. Blair Rummel is a top-notch coach. She's a strong role model for our female athletes, and I'm very pleased to announce that she is our 2021 Coach of the Year. Congratulations, Blair. Everyone should be erupting with applause right now. And now we're going to move on to the next one. I would describe our Advisor of the Year 
as a developer. This person sees the potential in others. He can recognize talent and knows what hard work is all about. His helpfulness is genuine and he wants the best for students in his program. I would also like to highlight his ability to tell stories and engage with students and staff. I would say he uses the LBWA method of leadership. For those of you that don't know, that's the leadership by walking around method. He generally has a coffee mug on hand as well and a story to tell, as I said. He has a terrific sense of humor as well. We have lots of examples of this in the activities office because this person also helps, in, helps out in various other roles. You might see him wearing a vest on campus or he might be delivering frozen turkeys to staff. But we'll get back to that. Most of all, let's recognize this person for bringing our mock trial program to another level. His students admire his ability to make learning the annual court cases an exciting experience. It is amazing to see the success and transformation of the teams he leads. Thanks to virtual presentations, many of us had the opportunity to watch the final courtroom experience of the season. And wow, were these students amazing in their roles. Congratulations to Chris Gaudet for leading our mock trial crew to excellence for the past several years. He is our activity advisor of the year. If you see Chris, please congratulate him for this honor and let him know that we still have his vest reserved for him for future events. I was able to find it because he buried it in the gator shed outside, so let him know we've got it, it's safe, and give him a big congrats as well. Thank you to everyone for sharing your energy and passion with all of our PL Lakers. Thank you, Beth, and congratulations to our award winners. What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awaking us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change. Declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. As we end this year, this very important and yes, very difficult year, I know you will continue to use your voice to influence and promote positive change. I know you will listen to the voices of others to help you make wise decisions and I know you will empower the voices of our students to help us band together to create an even better learner experience next year. I've been grateful to have wise and powerful voices around me all year. And I want to thank our administrative team, our incident command team, the Scott County Public Health and School Superintendent team, our school board, PLSEA leadership, built teams, team leads, and the entire DSC team who have provided outstanding leadership and support throughout the entire year. Thank you for the heavy lifting that you have all done, for your commitment to our students, and for your dedication to one another. I'm so proud of you all and for all the accomplishments that you helped our students with this year. The year is over. The cloud of the pandemic is lifting. Light is shining and change is happening. A few weekends ago, I attended a community barbecue called A Celebration of Love, hosted by Pastor Faraz with mayors and police chiefs from multiple cities. The next day, the Prior Lake Rotarians dedicated a peace poll to the city of Prior Lake at Gateway Park with the message written in the eight languages that are most spoken in our community, let peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth, in our community, in our schools, and in your hearts. Thank you for all of the contributions you have made to make this a truly important year. We ended the kickoff event in August 
with two students singing a song, a duet, make them hear us. And now we are going to end with the voice of Nana Sambru, who was one of those singers this fall. I'd like to invite her up to share her voice as she introduces the Prior Lake High School Choir under the direction of Randy Erlinson and Rob Hahn to close our celebration as they perform Unclouded Day. This past year, we entered many unknowns, many dark paths, a year filled with uncertainties and loss. A year we had to be adaptable, but also a year we had to make sure voices were being heard. It often felt like we had dark storm clouds constantly hovering over us. But now there are bright beams peeking through the clouds and they are slowly being lifted away. We are moving towards a healing and normalcy that has been blocked for so long. Something that we have been desperately waiting for. As we move forward, I promise you, there are going to be many more uncloudless days ahead. <laughs>